In this video, we're going to pull apart this Lucas starter motor. Okay, so this uh, starter motor, it, it does work um, and it does spin when it's cooked, connected up to the power. Uh, the issue is uh, the Bendix is very um, stiff and see how it's not springing back to how it, how it should? Uh, it's most likely because there's a lot of um, dirt and grime caught in there. Uh, the cause of that would be that uh, this has been greased at some point. You shouldn't use normal grease in there. Um, so this isn't actually off my mini, it's just one of the spare parts I had. So I decided to make a video on showing you how to disassemble it. Alright, so what I'll do first is I'll take it um, outside and I just want to degrease just the outside because uh, there's a lot of grease on there. This um, end piece here will be easy to clean while it's still assembled. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up all of this end piece, it's a lot easier to clean up while it's still assembled. Um, I can remove um, the terminal bolt, uh, and what I can do at this stage is remove all of those. So you have a nut and a washer, that, that's where you'd normally have the cable on there. Okay, next to come off is a anti-rattle washer, then you've got a normal washer, then you have this um, insulating washer, so that is made out of fibre and then that, um, because this is the um, positive terminal, um, it just present, prevents it from getting burfed. Next piece is a little washer, or it's like a little tube. That comes off next. Okay, so we might actually just take off this um, cover from around the edge. Normally, you don't have electrical tape here, so someone's been in this before. But. All right, next we will undo these two screws at the end. Okay, so now the entire assembly should just fall apart. Give it a little bit of a explosion. So just take the entire thing, just pull it straight out. Okay, so just make sure you've got one washer at the end. Sometimes that can get stuck inside the back of the, the unit. All right, so I'll show you how to get this um, end piece off the bend, to remove the Bendix. Uh, what you actually need to do is compress that spring. Uh, I've got these two little small vices and they'll actually work fine for this. You know, I just change the angle a bit so you can sort of see what's happening. So once that spring compresses, um, this little hat piece will um, drop down. I'll just give it a little bit of a persuasion. And then you can see that it's revealing this little um, wash or little um, clamp spring that holds everything together. So that needs to come off. Okay, so once that's off, this little hat just comes off as well. 
then you can lift the spring off. And what I'm going to do is put this down on the bench and then release the tension out of that. Then next uh, you have a single solid ring that comes off next. Then the ins internal part of the Bendix can just unwind and then that just slides off. And then that piece, external part of the Bendix will just work its way off the shaft. So in this case it's a little bit stuck but it's very rusty in there but it will just um, pull off. There we go. So once everything's apart, um, you can release the pressure in these. Just be careful because you don't want it to um, slip and cause any injury. It's not, um, uh, once I undo it, I'll show you how big it is. It obviously compresses a bit when it's on there, but um, it doesn't really expand much bigger than what it actually is. That's, that's the size of it. Okay, so then this piece, you can probably actually remove the Bendix. I would do that first, but it just depends on your vise. Um, my, the jaws on my vise aren't that large, so it's easy to grip it on that piece. Um, then this piece can come off. Um, there's a little bit of wear in that, it's a little bit wobbly. There is a washer. There should be one there, yeah. Small thin washer on this end. Uh, the other part as well to have a look at on the rotor for wear as well is this end section here. So that's like pretty worn on this one. If I get a set square you'll see the difference. So if you can see that difference there, you can go this way, you can sort of see that gap on there. That's how much it's worn by. That should be level. So you can put that on the lathe and make it nice and flat again if you're changing the brushes. Alright, I've got a, an, another rotor out of another one of these motors. Uh, so that's the one I've just pulled apart. Um, and I've shown you already how worn that part is. But this one here is a lot flatter. It's nowhere near as bad as that, that one there. Um, so I'm going to use that one and we just need to choose a cover that fits nicely. So can you see how much play there is in that? That's too loose. So this one is, this is too warm. Uh, this one here, it's a lot tighter. There's a little bit of play still but it's much better. So that's the one I'm going to go with. So I will get rid of these parts that we're not going to use. Alright, the next job to tackle now is to undo all of this. I will just take off the electrical tape that has been put on here. Then the next thing we need to do is undo these screws and what they do is a piece of metal in there. So this doesn't have magnets in it, it generates an electromagnet when the motor runs. So let's get those removed. Okay so now with those screws removed you can just remove the whole internal assembly and it should just pretty much just slide straight out. So what actually happens inside, you have these blocks of iron or steel. They sit in there and then that's what gets screwed. That's the, the screws hold those in place. Uh, the other thing too is this little um, insulating strip. I'll just carefully peel that out. Uh, the reason why we need that, it's so this connection here, which is connected to the main pin here, 
so that's all positively charged. Uh, if that touches the case, it's going to short circuit. So that's the purpose of that is just to act as an insulator to prevent it from shorting out. So we can slide that off. One of the springs has fallen out, but I'll fix that up in a second. All right, so we can have a look at what the brushes look like. So in order to re remove these, they come as a set, and then you need to re-solder them on. So they come with these bits of wire. You have to undo that solder there. These two uh, would get soldered just in there. Alright, so I just want to quickly discuss, um, so I've talked about how to get the brushes off, but now the bushing, there is a copper bushing that sits in here. So that can actually be replaced, but unfortunately in Australia they are none available to replace. No supplier has them. Uh, one of them says they do stock it, but they're out of stock. So that's one there. Um, the other one I've, I've talked about already, it's inside here, uh, that one there. So ideally they should be replaced. Right, I just want to undo these um, springs just so I can clean this part up. So you just lift them off. There's a bit of um, tension in those, but not a huge amount. And then once you get the springs off, you can just remove the brushes. They'll slide out like that. Alright, so I did a bit more um, searching on the internet to see if I can find anywhere to get the replacement um, brushes from, and also the bushes for inside here. Um, they, I can get some from the UK, but the cost of them, including postage, is just not cost effective to go to that option um, especially just for this because on the purpose of this is just to um, entertain you guys um, with a video and this isn't actually going to be used in my mini but if you if there's anyone looking to um, rebuild one of these you may be better off just buying a brand new starter motor rather than um, reconditioning it. But if you're in the UK, I guess uh, it is a, probably a good option still to um, rebuild these. All right, let me just get these other two connected. Uh, the other thing I want to point out too, uh, I noticed on here, there's a little bit of um, copper showing through and if I put that on the multimeter you'll actually um, see that there's no resistance there so that is actually worn down so that needs to be um, covered up otherwise um, the starter motor will short out and there may be a few more I might just give this a quick clean up um, I didn't really want to because of the cloth material but if I do that, then I can see if there's any other issues. Right, the next trick, um, I'll just, before I connect up them, uh, brushes back in there. Uh, just to make this go back onto the rotor easier, I find it easy just to put a, a cable tie around here. And obviously you do this to each one of them. And then, that cable tie will sort of pull up on the spring a bit. And then that will enable you to slide the rotor on a lot easier. Now obviously the zip tie will get in the way, but at least that initial part, um, you can get the actual uh, rotor into where the brushes are. So do that to each of them to um, hold it in place.
to just remember to put on this little um, plastic insulator otherwise you'll have problems okay so next you need to make sure you've got this piece of um, cardboard insulator that goes on there piece there I don't think it should be an issue because um, it's not going to touch the case. Just so you know when you put the screw back in it, it kind of will go through there like that. Okay. So there is a little um, bump on there that obviously lines up with housing. Now I gave this a bit of a paint of coat of paint. And what I want to do is just get it right in there. Uh, if that touches the edge, that one's okay because that's the ground terminal. This one here, um, you don't want it to touch and you'll see in a moment. because they can um, get in between these spots here and cause problems. This will all um, move back out again anyway in a second, but the purpose of this is so I can get these screws in. And also those pieces of metal. Alright, we'll sit these pieces back in and then obviously they go into the coil, get it into the right spot, put the screw back in. I'm not going to um, over tighten these, just going to get them in for now because we need a bit of um, play for adjustment. this back end piece just back out a bit and what we can do is get the rotor put in now just don't forget that um, there is a washer that sits on the end here these are um, bushes in the end they need to have oil in there but because there's a lot of wear already I'm just going to put grease this will probably upset a few people watching that I'm not doing it how you're meant to but if I replace the bushings uh, you wouldn't be doing it this way you just actually put the correct oil onto them, you soak the bushings into oil. Alright, so slide the rotor in, get it to this point where the bushes are touching it, and then it's it's not going to slide straight on straight away, but very carefully use probably better off using something like a plastic um, trim remover tool or something but I'll just use a screwdriver just to demonstrate this uh, I've just got to get the angle right so what I want to do is just work my way around and very carefully push the bushes in they're not going to move much because of the um, cable tie but you can 
can sort of just hook each one onto the rotor. Okay, there we go. So that's slid on now. Um, the other end I had sort of pushed in against my waist with a, a rag on it, just to put the, keep the pressure there. All right, so what we can do now is just snip off these cable ties. Okay, so now that each of them have been taken out, what we can do is slide it in and just watch out for these wires okay that's in all right next we need to just put this um, end cover back on now uh, it's only going to go one way there's a little nipple on there that lines up with there. Um, again with these bushings, if it, you've replaced a new one it needs to be soaked in oil but I'm going to use grease uh, because I think it will work a lot better anyway. And this will, because there's a lot of play in that still. And again, the purpose of this is just to demonstrate how to do it, uh, or how I'm doing it. It's by no means the correct way to do it. It's just how I'm doing it. Okay, so at this stage now, we can then insert these screws. Okay, it's ready to give that a bench test so let me just um, set that up in a vise I've got this hooked up to just jump the leads of a car battery and let's just try it out alright that works fine Okay, um, we're going to get the uh, Bendix back on there now. Uh, so, the first thing that needs to go on is the actual Bendix itself. Uh, that'll just slide straight on. So that spring feels nice and strong, so that's good. Uh, I'll just show you what I'm going to use. I've got this um, silicon lubricant and ideally that's what you want to use on these parts because you don't want the normal like grease or oil because what happens is it collects all bits of dirt and then that's what actually causes it to not move smoothly and next piece is the little um, screw shaped thing uh, I'll just see how that Um, the 
there's a little ridge there and that's where that little um, spring clip needs to go into so that's actually going to be enough because you can hopefully you can see that all right let me get that little clip okay so i'll try and get that on this can be a bit fiddly and i'll try a few different tools there, there must be a um, special tool for it because I don't think just bashing it on with a screwdriver is the correct way. So now I can just release the clamps. and I'll give it a test. Returning nicely. Okay, so we're just about done. Uh, what I've done, I've put a bit of paint on this cover piece. So we just need to screw that back on now. So I'll just put the screw in just to get it started. At least you've been able to sort of see how to pull one of these starter motors apart, um, how it all functions. Uh, maybe you'll find the video of some use, but at least it sort of shows you how to do it. Uh, I might at some stage replace those bushes and the brushes if once they become available, but otherwise I'll just keep this on the shelf as a spare in case I ever need it. So I'll leave it there, and thanks for watching my videos.